Hello, today I'm going to be embroidering some felt food. I'm gonna start with the slices of bread. So I have my machine set up so that I'm going to do two slices of bread on my six by 10 or 240 by 150 frame. And this design calls for tearaway stabilizer, but one trick that I like to use, as long as there isn't a lot of satin stitching, is you can use butcher paper, which is just paper on one side. It's got plastic on the other side. And it also works really well if you need a temporary stabilizer that's an iron-on. You can iron it on because since there's plastic on one side, it'll stay on the fabric until you pull it off. But I like to use it just as a stabilizer. It works really well. I, did, I didn't use it for the burger patties because there's stat satin stitching on those and it tore too easily, I used a regular tearaway stabilizer. But this is a really, really cost-effective way to keep your stabilizer prices down, is to use butcher paper whenever you can. So I've used that for all of the bread that I've made. I'm making a whole bunch of these play food sets to go to the Angel Tree organization locally where I live. So you can buy this design from So Sarah Designs. On Etsy and it stitches out wonderfully it's about 1250 Canadian so I think that's ten dollars US and it's a great price because there's a whole bunch of designs there's around a dozen different pieces of play food that you can do and they all fit in the 4 by 4 hoop so the first stitching the first stitching actually is a placement line but I'm gonna use it as a tack down line for my bread No, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and go to the second step because the first one is just a placement line for the bread. The second one is a placement line for your little white. So it's going to look like this when I'm done. So I'm going to skip the first step because that often will just tear my stabilizer anyway. And I know that it needs to be about there. And then I'm going to use the placement line for the white felt as my tack down line for my bread. So now that's tacked down to my stabilizer and it gives me the placement line for my white felt at the same time. I take my piece of white felt, put that on, and run the next stitch. Okay, so that step is done now. Because I only want to have to take my machine, my hoop off of the machine once, I'm going to go ahead and go to the second step of the other piece of bread and do the same steps again. Now that that's done, what I do, because my machine between steps, it'll cut the top thread, but it doesn't cut the bobbin thread. So I press my cutter, so it'll cut through both the top and the bobbin thread. So that when I take this off, I don't have any, any thread hanging on. And then what I'm going to do is I will just take my embroidery scissors and trim the white just outside of that stitching line. Okay, now all of the white is trimmed away and I can put it back in my machine. After, I like to use the 505 spray to keep my fabrics on the back in place. You could also use tape. And then I'll place those. And then I can do the final stitch outlines which will put together the two halves. Okay, so that's all done stitching out. Now on this one, I had my brown a little bit too high, so I'll have to redo that one, but I've done over 30 of these pieces of bread and that's only happened twice. 
So that's fine, and this one's totally fine. So that's what it should look like. And then you just, you can take everything out of the hoop. You can tear away your stabilizer, and then use your scissors to trim around the bread. And then you'll be all done, and it'll look like that. I love the bread, I think it's so cute. Okay, now I'm gonna make the cheese. And I'm gonna use some pre-cut tearaway stabilizer to do this. I'm just gonna make one in my four by four or 120 by 120 hoop. So I hoop my stabilizer. Stick that on my machine. Now for the cheese, it's different because there's no stitching on the cheese before you put your back on. You put your back on and you do all the holes with the back already on so that you can cut the holes out of both the front and the back and they'll go all the way through the piece if you choose to do it like that. I'm not gonna cut my holes out because they're really small and I don't think I could make them look good. For the pineapple, it's the same idea and I've cut out the middle but that's because it's a bigger hole and so it's easier. So here's my finished cheese and I didn't cut out the holes here because for one thing, I'm making 15 sets or more, so that's 60 little tiny holes, and I think the edges are just gonna be too jagged even with my smallest scissors. So not only will I kill my fingers, and it'll take forever, but I don't think it'll end up looking very good, so we'll see, I might change my mind. But so first you have a placement stitch, as with every design in this set, but I'm gonna use my placement stitch as a tack down line, for my piece, for just my front piece, I'm gonna use it as a tack down line. Now once that line is done, I'm gonna take it off my machine, and this is where you put your back on before it does the holes. Put it back on the machine, and start the second step. Now it'll t attach your back by going around and it'll do all the holes. And then that step is all done and your embroidery is finished. So then you want to clean up these extra strings, clean up the back if you have jump stitches on the front or the back. I'll just trim all of these up, make it look nice, take it out of the hoop, tear away my stabilizer, and then trim an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch around that outside stitching. And then my finished product looks like this. So there is the cheese. You could put matching bobbin thread in to make it look a little bit more professional. I just didn't bother. Okay, and now for the ham. I'm going to give you another option for stabilizer. This is tear away, and I've cut it from a big roll. So it comes like that in the big roll, and you just cut whatever size you need. So again, I have my four by four hoop. This time I will show you how to use the placement line as a placement line. Now this design doesn't get any simpler than this. There's a placement line and then you put both your front and back piece on and then there's a final stitch line. So that's it. There's no stitch details on top of this little piece of ham. So then once again, I'll cut my threads, take that off. Doesn't matter if you put the back or the front on first. Just make sure you're covering up this circle. And then the final stitch out.
take that off the machine. Oh, it doesn't always cut like it's supposed to. No threads on the front to trim. So just trim those up. Rip away your stabilizer and cut, and then you'll have a nice little piece of ham. Or it's called deli meat on the design. So there you go. Okay, so next up is the egg. So I've got my tearaway stabilizer in my hoop. I've got my hoop attached to my machine. I've got my egg design set up, and I'm going to run the first stitch as the placement line so that I know exactly where I put my fabric. Now I'll place my white egg fabric and make sure it covers those lines. And then there isn't a tack down stitch for the egg. The next step is this circle here. That's the placement line for the egg yolk. Now I can take my pre-cut square for my yolk, make sure that covers up that placement line. And then there will be a tack down line for the yolk. So now I'll cut my threads. Since I need to take this off the machine, now I'm going to trim around the yolk about an eighth of an inch away from that stitch line. I'll trim this extra thread here and then I will attach my back. So I've trimmed my yolk and I've sprayed my spray and put my back on, making sure that I cover that placement line you can see through the back to make sure that that's covered. And then I will do the final stitch line. And that's it for the egg. The egg is already done. So now you just trim off the extra threads, take it out of the hoop, tear away the stabilizer, trim it around the final stitch out, and you've got your egg. Okay, so next up is the mushroom. So I'm just going to do four mushrooms at once because four can fit in my four by four hoop. So I've got my design loaded and my hoop on. And what I'm going to do for this one is I found that I want to use the placement line as a tack down line for my felt so that before I do this little fill, sort of a satin stitch part of the mushrooms, <clears throat> I want to have that tack down line in place because sometimes it shifts and rips the stabilizer without that tack down line. So that's how I'm going to do it. It's just personal preference and what works for you and for your machine, how you want to do that. So let's go. So there's that, that placement line that I'm using as a tack down line. And then I'm going to do that first step and the second step, that little infill detailing on the mushroom for all four. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to do steps one and two for each of the four mushrooms, and then I'll flip it over and put the back on. Okay, so now I will take it off. Do my spray. I'm not worried right now about the threads on the back being messy. That doesn't need to be taken care of right now. And then I will do machine step number three for each of these. So I'll go to one, three, and then two, three, 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 and four, three. I've just got to make sure I don't get confused and tell my machine to do the wrong step. Okay, then that's all done. So it's all stitched out on the back and the front. Lots of threads that need to get trimmed though. So once you do that, I cut them apart like this 
and then I tear away the stabilizer so I can get the stabilizer that's on the insides. <clears throat> and then you'll have cute little mushrooms that look like that. And I'm going to be doing two per set. Okay, so now I'm going to make the onion. So for this one, I'm trying out a new pre-cut stabilizer that's 8x8, eight eight, so it's meant for 4x4 four four hoops. Although my hoop is more like 5x6. So this stabilizer is a little bit small, but it's actually going to work just fine. Anyway, so I'm trying that out. Still tear away stabilizer. Now for the onion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my felt. I'm using purple for the onions. Load that into my machine. And I'm going to use the placement stitch as a tack down stitch for each item. So I will do both the tack down stitch and then this onion detailing. So I'll do steps one and two, just like I did for the mushrooms, I'm doing four in one hoop. So I'm gonna do steps one and two for each of the four. And then I'll meet you back. Whew, okay, so those ones have a ton of stitching with all the little detail in there. If you don't want to spend huge amounts of time making these, or if your machine doesn't cut the jump stitch on top, stitches on top, you're going to have a whole bunch of little jump stitches in between each ring, and you could leave them. That's one option. Or if you have a really good pair of little scissors, you could get in there and cut each one. If you don't mind doing that, that's an option. Another option that I have for you is to suggest that you do the beetroot file in place of onion or just skip the onion since this is so similar anyway. I did this in purple initially thinking the first time I went through this that it was the onion and I don't think I've ever put beetroot on my sandwich. I don't know if that's just the same as beets so maybe this should be more of a purple red color but this has a lot less stitching and is still really really cute and it's a similar size. It's just a little bit more of an oblong shape. So you, that's another option instead of the onion because the onion is so time consuming and you're gonna have tons of jump stitches to cut if your machine doesn't cut them for you. So now my back. And one thing I've been doing to save on felt is I've been trimming this excess off because I cut my pieces bigger than they needed to be. Okay, I can use those on the back. And then I just do this little lemon peel method where I just peel it to make sure it's covering everything that it needs to cover. Make sure my top and bottom and sides are all covered. So I have another one of those pieces from a previous one. And then all that's left to do is to put the back on. So there is my four onion slices. And then I like to trim all these extra threads, this mess of threads back here while it's still in the hoop because then the hoop is holding it nice and still for me. Take out your stabilizer and cut your onions apart. And then you've got some cute little onions for your sandwich. They're a lot smaller than I thought they would be. So I'm probably going to do two for each set is they're about the same size as the mushrooms. There it is. Okay, and now we're gonna make the pineapple. So I've got my stabilizer in my hoop, and I'm gonna run the first step, placement stitch, and I'm gonna do it as a placement stitch. 
And then I'll place my piece of felt that I've cut and start the next step. Okay, so that step's done. I've already cut my threads. I can take this off, attach the back. There's my back. Put that back on the machine. So now the machine steps are all done. I'll take it off, take it out of the hoop, trim those extra threads on the back, then tear away the stabilizer, cut it out, and cut out that middle section too, so that you're left with that. So there's the pineapple. Okay, so the sandwich spread is next, which could be peanut butter, jam, a dark brown for Nutella. If you're in Australia, maybe Vegemite, I think is what it's called, Vegemite spread. Um, you could also do honey. So I did peanut butter and jam for mine. So now I'm just starting the jam. So I'm going to do the first step as a placement stitch so I know where to put my fabric. Okay, now the placement line's there. Now something I haven't done yet is I haven't run step one again. as a tack down line, but I'm gonna go back to my machine here and go back to step one and run that line a second time to keep my felt in place because I haven't glued it or taped it or anything. And I don't want it to shift around while it's doing those little detail squiggles. And then whether you do step one again as a tack down line or not, the, step, the next step is to do those little squiggles so everything looks good, my felt is in the right place, I'm going to go ahead and do the detailing. So once that's done, I've cut my threads already, take it off the machine, do the spray, place your back, make sure that's covering everything it needs to cover and do your final stitch. Okay, so next on the list is the sandwich spread, which could be ketchup like I did here in the red. You could also do mustard, relish, mayo, anything else you put on your sandwich. So I've got my stabilizer hooped. I'm gonna put that on my machine and run the placement stitch as a placement stitch like I did with the pineapple. Okay, then once that placement line is done, it's time to put on the front and the back at the same time. So I'm gonna spray a little bit from the back. Place my back on. Place my front on, make sure that those are covering your placement stitch. And then back on the machine, and then step two, and that's, and then it'll be done. So then that's all done. You can take that out of your hoop, trim the threads, and tear away the stabilizer, and trim your felt, and then you've got your nice little splotch there. It's in the files as uh, tomato sauce, I believe, so it's in the teas if you're having trouble finding it. Okay, so next on the list is the tomato. So I've got my file loaded on my screen here, and I'm gonna do two tomatoes like that in my four by four hoop. So I'm gonna run the placement line for just the first one to start. Then I can place my red square that I've cut and start all the detail stitching. So I've got my red on my machine already and then I've got my gold ready to do the seeds.
Okay, and now it's time for our color change. Pick out the red. gold color. And then we're ready to do the seeds. Okay, so then you'll want to switch back to red again. And if you don't, your tomato will end up looking like this, this one that I made a mistake on. And I even tried to go around that outer stitching with the red to fix it, but it just started making more of a mess. So that one's just gonna stay like that. But now I've learned my lesson. So I'm gonna switch back to the red and then I'll take it off the hoop spray my back with my sticky spray, put my back on. So I'm doing this whole tomato first, and then I'll do the entire second tomato. So now the final stitch line for that one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to start my second one is I've sipped my thread so I can take this off the hoop, and then I'm just gonna trim that corner so that doesn't get in the way of my second one. I'll do that on the back as well. And then I will start with step one for the second one, and it's just the same process again. So the second one's all done, so then once you take it off your machine and tear away your stabilizer and trim all your threads and cut it out, there's your tomato. Okay, next I'm gonna make the burger patty. So I've got my dark brown felt already cut and I've got my file loaded into my machine and I've got my hoop on the machine. Now I'm just gonna look at my cursor so that I know where to place my felt. You could always run the placement line first and then place your felt. I'm gonna use the placement line as a tack down line. I found that for this one, I really need a tack down line because there's gonna be a ton of satin stitches all over this and those can cause it to shift. So now I'm gonna do the second step, which is the little lines on the burger patty. Okay, so I've cut my thread so I can take this off the machine. I'll put my spray on the back and then attach my back piece. Put it back on the machine and run the final stitch outline. So then the burger patty is all done. Take that off your machine and trim your threads, take it out of the hoop Tear away your stabilizer and trim your felt, and you'll have a nice little burger patty. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna do the bottom of the bun. And so the first step for that one is going to be my placement stitch. And then just like the deli meat, the ham, I'll place both the top and bottom, and then run the second stitch. Okay, so I've cut my threads, I'll take that off. 
I'm going to place the back first. Then I can see from the front if I've placed it correctly, if I've covered the lines. And then I will place the front piece. And then the second stitch, we'll finish it off. So the bottom is all done. You can take it off your hoop and tear away your stabilizer, cut it out, and you'll have a nice little bun bottom like this. I elected to just do mine flat without any stuffing in it. If you follow the instructions that are coming up next for the top part of the bun, you could, you could do the back so that it's open, so that you can add a little bit of stuffing and then hot glue it closed so that it's got some padding in it like the top bun. But now I'm gonna show you how to do this one, and if you want to follow those instructions to add some stuffing to your bottom bun, then you can. Okay, so for the top part of the bun, I'm going to do the placement line and then put down my piece of felt and then redo the placement line as a tack down line because I've found that if I don't do a tack down line, then once it starts doing the seeds, it may shift a little bit as the seeds aren't a very good stitch to hold it in place. So first, the placement line. Okay, so now I'm gonna place my felt. Make sure that covers my line. And I'm going to go back a step on my machine and redo that first step. So now that that's tacked down, I can go to step number two, which is the seeds. Okay, so now that the seeds are all stitched out, I'm gonna cut my threads. And then for the back, I've got all my pieces for the bun cut about six by four inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one of those in half. And now when I put it on the back, I'm going to place them so that they're covering up the line like they're supposed to, but then so that they're overlapping a little bit. And I've got quite a bit of overlap on these ones. So these ones are definitely going to work. They're bigger than they need to be. So then that'll leave me an opening through which I can put the stuffing. And then afterwards, I'll hot glue the opening closed. So now I'm ready to do my final stitch line that'll go around the outside. So once that's all stitched out, you can take it off your hoop, tear away the stabilizer, and trim your felt, and then turn your bun over. And then through that opening, you can add a little bit of stuffing, just do tiny, tiny, tiny bits at a time so you can get it even and so that it'll spread throughout the bun. And then you can hot glue it closed or you could use liquid stitch or you could hand sew it if you prefer. I just did hot glue and I'm happy with it. And then you've got the top part of your bun. So that's all the pieces in our food set. And that'll make you a great, great little play set that you can give to kids, grandkids, neighbor kids, keep at your house if you have occasionally kids visiting. Um, you can give it to charity organizations such as Angel Tree who, are, who accept um, brand new items that are handmade. and it, your felt food can be enjoyed for many years to come. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep an eye out for new machine embroidery videos and check out my other videos if you happen to crochet or if you've tried your hand at quilting. Thanks, bye.